handling is good going around this corner. Nice performance tires. Good pickup. Brakes are strong. Corner is amazing for the size of the thing. Today, we are in the 2024 BMW X540i. Now this is the new facelift model. So we have the new iDrive 8, the new dashboard. I love the ambient lighting X5 in there. So much more trim area behind the iDrive 8 screen. We also have a different transmission shifter. I gotta say this one is improved. I do like it. Up here we have cup holders. We have an M Sport package on this vehicle. So we have the M Sport steering wheel. We've got M Sport on the outside. Let's hop out. Let's take a look around the vehicle. Let's point out some of those LCI differences. And then let's uh, get in here and we'll go for a drive. So 2024 is that mid life cycle refresh for the LCI. This one is an M Sport package, carbon black exterior. So we have high gloss black roof rails, high gloss black window surrounds, 21 inch M Sport brakes or M Sport wheels with the blue M Sport brakes. The air vent uh, got three extra fins on it for the LCI, which is an update. We have thinner design headlights with the uh, two arrows, which are the turn signals. So redesigned LED headlights, laser lights are no longer an option. The whole front bumper has been redesigned as well. And the kidney grill slats got these dimples in it. And instead of chrome, they're now satin aluminum. So that's pretty much the changes at the front. Now. I think active stop and go cruise control is a standard feature on this car because we have the radar sensor there and we don't have advanced driver assistance package on this car. So I'm gonna take it for a test drive and see if we do have active stop and go cruise control. Coming around the other side, exactly the same carbon black exterior. And at the back, we have the redesigned taillights and these arrow lookings. And then we have the chrome tailpipes. Let's take a look inside the back space. I love how the X5 has this split tailgate design with another click it comes down. We have the privacy cover. Privacy cover gonna come in, connect here. You can also click the button there, disconnect it, tuck that away right here, and you have more storage area. Looks like there would be a spare tire there, but in Canada, all of our cars come standard with run flat tires, so there's no spare tire. When you're ready to close up the back, click that button, and it does both tailgates. That's a good look of the exterior. Let's get in the inside, go for a drive. Push button starts down here. You know what? One thing I forgot to do, which I usually do, is check out the back seats. One thing I noticed is that comfort door access is no longer on the back door where it used to be. This is the black Sansa fin interior. It's perforated. Center console comes down. There's right here, is that's how you drop the back seats. Looks like we got rear heated seats, but we're missing the rear climate control screen with the LCD screen. So we've got two USB-C ports. Last year, that was a standard feature. It looks like now it's part of the packages. This one is the essential package with M Sport. Now, in order to get the rear climate control zone, you need the enhanced package. Now these are the front seats, black Sansa fin, like that light strip. Now one thing you'll notice between the LCI and this one, we no longer have the infotainment or the um, climate control here. It's now into the infotainment screen. All right, I'm set. Let's go. Put into drive is now just a toggle. So I will say that's a little bit better. Before you had this bulky shifter and there's a button on the side that you had to engage like a safety. But now you just toggle down for drive and you're on your way. So I have automatic brake hold. Let's go. We are in comfort mode. We have head-up display because this is a central package. So central package gives you head-up display, gives you the 360 parking camera. I believe it now gives you Harman Kardon sound system, which is an upgrade from the last year's model, where Enhance was part of the, or the Harman Kardon was part of the Enhance package. They're gonna go, where is this guy going? Going straight, we're gonna go left here. Now, we've been playing around with iDrive 8 quite a bit since we've had uh, them coming in on other cars starting last year and everything. And iDrive 8 is pretty interesting. It's touchscreen, the touchscreen is faster, it's more intuitive, the main menu looks better. You still have the iDrive controller down here. 
So while you're driving, you won't really find that you wanna to be touching the screen too much, but the iDrive controller lets you do everything as well, but it's just more convenient. Did I go the wrong way? I don't know. So I drive a touch screen, more intuitive. One thing that I like, I mean, a, a drawback is that climb menu. But one thing I like is this is like the main menu button and each vehicle now has its own app. So instead of iDrive 7, you go into car, you go into settings, and then you go into ambient lighting. Now you just click it and each one has its own app that you can just go directly into. And it saves a lot of time. All right, where are we? We're gonna go right here. We'll go left up here. So play around with the infotainment system. I get stuck in a bit of traffic and we have some time we're gonna head to the highway now one thing with this the 40i is the b58 engine so it's the three liter single twin scroll turbocharged six cylinder engine now in the last vehicle they had the gen 2 b58 we now have the gen 3 b58 which actually adds in port injection on top of the direct injection and a few other things 48 volt mild hybrid system is in this car but we're getting a big horsepower of 40 horsepower more over last year big jump so last year was 335 this year we have 375 in the engine now the other day i took a 2023 out for a test drive so it'd be interesting to see the engine power difference if i notice it when i'm in sport mode i'm accelerating right, let's wait for those cars to go by there we're a little low on gas, but I like the gauge cluster of iDrive 8, much more customizable. When you're in comfort, you click this button here, and you can go through different content. I mean, the map one is the best, but you can definitely go through, and you can choose the layouts. Go back. All right, we're gonna let that pedestrian go. We will come back to that. All right, here we go. mirror here oh perfect a red light will give us a good uh, chance to do a launch but like I was saying if you click here oh someone's not happy he's parked in the middle of the intersection why didn't he go now he's literally in the middle of the intersection man Toronto drivers I like guys whatever okay so back down here you go over click this button you go over the layout so we have the, this layout, kind of the standard one. This one I like for um, comfort mode. It's very, lets you see most of the map, very simplistic, gives you it on the left side. And then this one. Now, when you go in between sport and eco mode, so right now we're in comfort, so go to eco. This will always be the eco. You'll see you can no longer configure layout on eco. So you can only configure layout in comfort. Then you go into sport and it goes closer in. So that's why when I'm in comfort, I like to leave it like this. So you get all three gauge clusters kind of depending on what your your driving style is like now the 48 volt mild hybrid system auto engine start stop is automatically done but when you go into sport mode it deactivates that all right let's get a well they're probably gonna get an advance and then when we get a green light we'll give it a good floor and see how this car compares Okay, yeah, you, you can definitely tell right away that uh, the engine, much more, much more responsive, a lot more torque, a lot more horsepower. The X5 definitely picks up faster than it did in the old one. And you can see the head-up display changes when you go into sport mode as well. You now have the RPMs coming up towards the center, which is kind of cool. Now cruise control, we'll try cruise control on the highway. All right, let's get on to the highway here. Handling is good going around this corner. Nice performance tires. Good pickup. Brakes are strong. Corner is amazing for the size of the thing.
Right, this is perfect time to try out the cruise control. No, the radar sensor is there at the front, but it doesn't work. Now on the X7, it, it had the active stop and go cruise control. The X5 does not. It's so interesting why they have the radar at the front, but they can't just have it activated so that it follows that car in front of you. Standard feature on a lot of other cars, but not with BMW. It, it always boggles me. acceleration rpm stay up high when you're in sport mode all right let's try comfort mode so in comfort mode the rpms are dropping you don't get to see what your engine's doing over here and let's go just picks up doesn't downshift as much but still great pickup like you need to pass somebody no problem Now, one thing with the infotainment system that I have learned is if you go into live vehicle and you're in sport mode, you get adaptive content. So you can see what's the engine like. Three hundred ninety-eight horsepower it says more than the rated three seventy-five. Americans watching. The suspension is soft. Like this would be the adaptive M suspension in it. So we're in the stiffer mode. And then when you go into comfort, the suspension's gonna get softer. You can feel it right away. You can feel the little bumps disappearing in comfort mode. Brakes, very firm. Large brakes for the X5. Everything you need with stopping power. Fun in sport mode, but realistically, most times you're just gonna be in comfort. You're just gonna be enjoying the car. It's not it's not a sports car, so it's gonna be in sport comfort mode most of the time. Suspension's comfortable. Steering is heavy, but not too heavy. It's nice and comfortable. One thing with sport is you can customize that individual. So you can go sport individual, and then you can configure it, and you can say, okay, like we want dampening in sport, but we want steering to be comfort. No problem or you can even have suspension, comfort. I'm just gonna leave the car in comfort mode for now on. One thing I do wanna test out is the navigation. Let's search. See, one thing that's interesting with iDrive 8 is they made it so that you can't use the dial while you're driving, but if you, oh, no, we went, we don't want the climate control. But if you, yeah, if you go here, you can type in while you're driving, which makes no sense to me. On iDrive 7, it was the opposite. Park your BMW. Let's start now. One thing that's cool is the augmented reality navigation that shows up in the gauge cluster when you're approaching your turns and whatnot. Now, with your infotainment system, I mean, with, uh, with the LCI, with the iDrive 8, you also got different like fan controls here. These are like little toggles that are hanging out. I gotta say, I'm not the biggest fan of this design. Like the other one was like a little scroll. It was much sleeker, much easier. These ones stick out, are probably prone to get broken in the future. One thing I do like is the ambient lighting. We go home, we go here, we go to, 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 to interior lighting. 
we can change the color, the brightness, ambient. Like, let's change it to green. See, it changes there. All right, normal, comfort, acceleration. Okay. You ever anywhere where you just need to like get ahead of somebody quick so you can lane change and make it right? Yeah, you have no problem doing that. You can see how we pulled those cars. They were just going normal and I stepped on it. Not even that fast. Could have put it in sport, could have done a little bit more. Could have used launch control if you had more kilometers on the car. Ambient lighting, one of my favorites. But also too, you can rearrange these widgets as well. So like these app menus, like if you wanted to put the something at the top, like ambient lighting right now is top, but maybe you want to put climate control here. You can move these around exactly where you want them. Now your BMW ID, best thing ever. You can make sure that all of your settings save for your BMW ID, and when your spouse gets in the vehicle, all of their settings save. So not only is that like your seat, but your mirrors, even your safety systems, your climate control. Because there is a lot of safety systems that's gonna be in this car, and that's gonna be part of your driving settings. Like right there, you feel the lane keep assist, steering intervention pulled me back into that lane. So you go into steer, driving assistance, safety and warning, pre-collision system. You can select if you want that on, off, medium, late. See that steering intervention activating because I forgot to signal. Lane departure warning, steering intervention, blind spot detection. Shows you exactly what that the range would be. Steering intervention, turn one steering, exit warning, fatigue alert, a speed warning. So say you get to, I don't know, 150 kilometers per hour, a little alert will pop up for you. Let you know you're going too fast. Chassis, sport, exterior lighting, doors and windows you can do, comfort door access, approaching when you are locking. Oh, you can see the augmented reality is picked up in this corner. So it's using that front camera, feeding it back into here and letting no arrow, like you need to be turning left here. And we are gonna do that. Hopefully we get in advance. We got in advance, but we have a truck in front of us. So let's see if we even make it through. We saw the events, okay. You can feel the body roll there as we're going around that corner, but it's comfortable, sporty, great drive, comfortable. Like if you need a large SUV for your family, like you can get the trailer hitch on this one, boats, you know, anything you need for the trailer, this thing will tow quite a bit. I think it's like, I don't wanna put a number on it, but it's quite a bit, everything you need for a large size boat. Yeah, digital key, you can put a digital key into your Apple wallet. I think they're coming up with Android Auto as well. So if you have, or not Android Auto, but Android. Uh, we gotta have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both uh, standard and wireless with this car, as well as the uh, standard navigation with real-time traffic info. Your climate control menu. A lot of options to go through there. There's a personal assistant. Oh, I usually activate it through this button. You can set it up to be on like Hello BMW. You know, navigate me here, navigate me there. You can see that augmented reality navigation is uh, pretty fancy, pretty cool. We go into sport, you still have it. You go into eco, you still have it. What have I not showed you guys on this? Maybe the massive panoramic glass sunroof. Right here, you pop this up. You have a wireless charging tray. You have heated and cool cup holders here. You can keep your coffee hot, keep your ice caps cold. Or come for eco, went over that. New park button is right here. So I, I really like the shifter. And if you go down one, then you go into sport with the transmission. You have the paddle shifters for the eight-speed automatic transmission, so you can uh, control those manually if you wanted to. I mean, there's really no need to. Yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this POV driving of the brand new LCI 2024 BMW 40i with an M Sport package. If you guys are in the Toronto marketplace, make sure you guys hit up Parkview BMW. Thank you to Parkview for providing the vehicle for this test drive with POV. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, you wanna purchase BMW, feel free to reach out to me in my email down below. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next POV driving video. Just wanna give you guys a good look at the ambient lighting before we actually end the video because we just parked and we took out of the light. But look at how green that is. Look at the green down here. It's on the door panel. It's everywhere. What other colors do we have with this? Interior lighting. 15 colors. Ivory. A nice yellow, which is new. You can get a lime. You can turn it off if you need to. Oh, that's a beautiful blue. We got reds too. Oranges. We got pink. You can do pink. Rose. Yeah, pretty cool. All right.